Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. What? It's over the bar. This week's RTE GA podcast is wondering, is there anything to be said for another mass gathering? Hello and welcome to the RTE GA <laughs> podcast. I'm Mikey Stafford. We are today discussing the halfback line on our hurling team of the All-Star of the Sunday game era. One of these days, I better come up with a better name for this thing. I, can't, I muddle it every week. We are picking the halfbacks hur- on the hurling team, All-Star hurling team of the Sunday game era. It's not getting any easier. Anyway, I'm delighted to say we are joined by Neil McManus. Antrim hurler extraordinaire, uh, Henry Shefflin, former Kilkenny star and Sunday game analyst, and Rory O'Neill, the series editor and producer of the Sunday game. How are we doing, lads? Good, Mikey. Good. Yeah, yeah. All good, all good. Here. Yeah. Right, lads, for anyone unfamiliar, good. We, we are, as I keep mangling, we're picking the hurling all stars of the Sunday game era. So I'll just show you where we are at the moment. Uh, thus far, we have Brenda Cummins in the goal, won by a landslide. Uh, Brian Lowen is full back, uh, flanked by two Corkmen, Brian Corcoran and Dermot O'Sullivan. Brian Corcoran making a very <laughs> late uh, drive to knock JJ Delaney out of the team. Um, so that's where we're at, uh, Henry. There's not, there's not a Kilkenny man yet, but I think we might be rectifying that today. I'll, I'll give you. A, I was yeah, just going to yeah. say, Mikey, don't worry, that's going to change. <laughs> that's <today. a> change. <laughs> <laughs> so I shall. Last week we ran an article on the. Um, written by Owen Ryan. We ran an article asking, uh, kind of looking back at hurling halfbacks since 1979 and kind of reflecting on some of the greats. It was a very long list. We came down to about 48 for people to vote for. And the top 10, um, we have Brendan Maher at 10, Kieran Carey at 9, Sean Og O'Halpin comes in at 8, Tony Keady is at 7, Shawnee McMahon at 6, Ken McGrath at 5, poor JJ Delaney seems to be edged out again. He's definitely on the subs bench. Yeah. He's, at, he's at 4. And at three, and on one wing, we have Paddy Maher. On the other wing, or in the centre, we have Brian Wheelahan. And uh, topping the pole at the moment, uh, we have Tommy Walsh. So that is our top Jeez, ten. And you see the names. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, Henry, I suppose, we come to you first. Um, I'm imagining you'd have no dispute with Tommy Walsh topping this pole. No, absolutely not. And I think uh, I think what he did on the field has definitely got him to the top. But as well as I think what he's doing off the field at the moment is uh, driving him up that list as well with his commentary <laughs> and his excellence of uh, you know detail and what's going on in the hurling world uh, each Sunday. So and we're really missing him off the radio at the moment. But no, no surprise there. I think he's been outstanding and his number of all stars over the years probably and his record and his achievement in that position. So a lot of the other players you've listed there probably. We're between different lines, so um, no surprise there whatsoever, Rory. Mm. No, yeah, no he surprise. really, um, he really, he became kind of the archetype, didn't he, Neil? Like he's, you know, he's not too big. You wouldn't say he's too fast, but he, his his all round package kind of made him the 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 kind of you know, if you were to design a wing back, Tommy Walsh is kind of where people are going these days, isn't he? It, it was just pure desire, you know, Tommy. It didn't matter if it was. Dan Shanahan or who he was marking, you know, somebody his own size, he was incredible. I think, as you say, it just illustrates to every player, it doesn't really matter, you know, the physical attributes that you have, whenever that desire is there, like what Tommy had, he was unstoppable. I loved, even I heard some commentary about him earlier in the year there, uh, they are talking about his ability to try and win sprints, his ability to try and win, you know, <laughs> anything that was going on at Kilkenny training, he wanted to, he wanted to win, he would nearly turn a sprint session into full contact just to keep himself ahead of people. You know, <laughs> you, you, he's a rogue as well. You know, like when he, uh, yeah. he had all he had, he had all the arts you'd want, uh, and a nice tight, feisty uh, wing half. Yeah. Speaking of feistiness, I wanted to just uh, relay a story here to Henry because you must have witnessed this, Harry, uh, Henry. And I want to know a how often this happened, and b you know, what were your take on this? As the head of the 2012 All Ireland final replay, um, Owen Larkin told this story to to Sean O'Rourke last year. Um, so I ended up grabbing his brother Podrick in a headlock and the two of us fell to the ground my helmet fell off and all I could hear was Jackie Tyrrell shouting at Tommy don't do it don't do it next thing I was after getting a boot in the face from Tommy Walsh he was a very good friend of mine as well 
Things kicked off. I was on the way out of training and Brian gave the Brian Cody roar to come back. I said, I'm not hanging around for that stuff. And Brian let another roar. When Brian lets one, one roar, you take notice. When he lets two, you're going to come back. As soon as training was over, I got my gear and I was out the door. I can try, uh, Tommy turned up at my doorstep that night. I went out to the door and he said, Larks, I don't know what happened to me. I'm in bits. I'm so sorry. I just said grand and slammed the door in his face. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, no. And that, that's Larks' version of events. I'm sure Tommy is a different version of events. But uh, no, there, there definitely is an eminence and truth to that. And it, um, ah, look, to be honest, you're just on that story, which has got great airplay and it sounds very good. Tommy, to be fair, would defend himself by saying he was lying on the ground when the incident happened. So he couldn't actually kick him in the face. But, but that, was him, <laughs> that, 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 that was the feisty character he was. And Neil outlined right. It was just his heart. It's just his passion. And like You would have seen him on the Sunday game, you know, Mickey and Rory. But what we would have seen him in training. Like he, Tommy wanted to play every Welsh Cup game that was going. He used to be disgusted when Brian Cody used to give him a break in December and January. And I think that is the player he was. And like, there was plenty of affair. I remember marking him one day in a training match and I was getting the better of him. And he just couldn't take it that I was getting the better. It didn't happen very often whatsoever. And the ball was up the end of the, end of the field just before it was starting to be delivered down. And he just grappled me and thrown me onto the grounds. It was like as if, I don't care, Henry's not getting a score You're here. You're not getting, getting this ball. Yeah. No, absolutely not. But uh, I think it was that heart and that passion um, that's what, you know, met, met him a fan's favourite and met him, you know, such a key part of our team. It's different yeah. now. Like, you used to love seeing Tommy go up into the sky and grabbing the ball and, and delivering it and the roar go from the crowd. While I'm sure we get to speak about it, it's different now that a wing back wins the ball. It's like, don't hit it away. Don't deliver it. We're looking at the GA goal matches every Sunday at the moment. And that's what happened. The roar went up from the crowd. But now it's like, steady it down play through the lines, give it back to someone, bit of link play. And I think that's that's something that's gone out of the game that is, is a bit of a loss, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Neil, you have, um, looking at the list, obviously, Padraig Maher is, it, it, Paddy is coming in there in the top three. And uh, what I always think about Paddy Maher when he was starting out, I, I, I just thought he was amazing from the start. He was just so powerful. But the one thing that always stood out with him at first was he wore white boots. I always thought if a hurler is going to wear white boots, he has to be very, very good. And uh, he's, he's certainly earned the right to wear white boots. Potty was, the first time I'm, I marked Potty was uh, as a minor. I think uh, Tip won the, the minor in 06, possibly. Um, and Potty and Brendan, you know, the, the crew that came through at that stage were incredible. But Potty was so physically imposing, even just at 17 years of age. Uh, I think he, he may be captain top 10 under 21 All Ireland as well. I've never I've never even met somebody who trains as much. I had him up at my summer camp in Cushendall two years ago, and whenever you, you bring somebody up to that camp, usually it's uh, you know where are we going tonight or you know <laughs> what, what, what's happening. And Potty was asking you know does your club have a gym? You know, and he, he was genuine. He just wanted to hit the gym, and uh, so. Uh, that that really tells you all you need to know about him. His work rate's incredible. He's a he's a physical specimen. Uh, athletically, he's probably unmatched. Actually, whenever you, you look through these players that we're looking at, Potty is physically uh, more dominant than any of them. He is his ability to win. Like I think his first All Star was at full back, and that was you know he's probably about twenty years of age. You know, dropping high ball and on top of him was just fish to a bear. I'm sure. Henry said, you know, a few confrontations with him uh, over the years, even, even as a youngster. But he, he's probably, of the last 10 years, the standout uh, halfback of, of, of my generation anyway. Yeah, Henry, what, you, must, you, you would have come across him when he was a good bit out of minor, but still pretty young by inter-county, uh, senior to county terms, and you would have been, you know, kind of in your prime or your, your post-prime prime, shall we say. Uh, just yeah. <laughs> In terms of attitude and mentality, he always struck me as completely fearless. He wouldn't have cared if he was marking Henry Shefflin or if he was marking somebody he never met in his life. No, no I think it's first I learned he was 20. He was playing full back, like another pivotal position. Um, so, and the one thing about, you know, I was just thinking about him there, we always speak about in the dressing room, you know, stick out your chest and, and be big and strong. And Paulie Maher, probably the biggest chest ever, I think, in a half back line, you know, as <laughs> outline, he was so physically imposing, but he just was just 
you know, he was very top heavy and he was just so, so strong. So, uh, um, but I think in any area of the game, you know, we're talking about 40 years, I think Paddy Marr would have fitted in very well. I think that's just a testament to the player he is. And it's, it's been the longevity of his career. All those players were speaking of at the moment. He's still going strong. And I think it's the work for any of the younger people listening in. You know, we talk about Tommy, we talk about Boric Maher. It's the work they do off the field is the reason why they last so long. And look, in, what was it? It was 2010 when we first uh, came across him, I think it was. So, and here he is being an all-star still at this level. So uh, I think it's, it's testament to, to the level he's at. But again, physically imposing, but a great delivery of ball. And he's one of those players, I remember in 2011, I think it was, or 2012, where we actually identified a forward. It was probably the first time that Kenny ever did it. We identified, I think Eddie Brennan went on him. And Eddie's job that day was to keep Paulie Mark quite because he was such a big player for Tipperary. Um, and that was kind of the, the hallmark we, we, we thought he was at that stage. Jesus, Rory, the thought of that now, Brian Cody detail, and, uh, you know, Eddie Brennan to mark a halfback, that, that's measured a man on it. <clears throat> two guards, two, guard, two, two members of the guard of Shia Khan are going at it, and uh, I'd say both well capable of using the stick uh, in a flat <laughs> field fashion as well. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> not, not shy when it comes to dishing out the, uh, dishing out the timber. But the one thing that strikes me, I mean, look, I suppose we all have our favourites. And, um, I mean, Brian Wheelahan was arguably one of the greatest players I ever saw play. I'm just surprised that JJ is still only on number four. I mean, I just, oh, like, you know, if there, he was so, like, he's a very unusual player, JJ. And I'm sure you probably marked him plenty of times as well. And I'd like to, for Henry to give us an indication because, Henry, you obviously would have played against JJ, whether it was inside in the full forward line or out on the, on the half forward line at training. And he's a left-hander and holds, it sli- holds a hurley slightly mm. unorthodox. Can you just explain the difficulties in actually coming up against a player who kind of plays the game in that way and just a physical way that he imposes himself on players? Well, I think first of all, it was the left-hander. So he was coming at a different angle to catch the ball than yourself. Yeah. So at, at that stage, especially in his prime, a lot of ball was poked off of JJ. And he just came, like you, you think of that famous moment in 2008 or Laird and Final where Dan Shannon, hurler of the year, you know, was dominating the skies. First two pockets came down. Jade just comes in. He was giving away a couple of inches to Dan. But again, it was just his, I think his timing, again, for all these people we speak about, is their timing. Jade's timing was just impeccable, you know. And anyone playing the half back line, they're so well able to read the game. And JJ had both of those, but it was just his timing to be able to come in at the last second to come with his left hand yeah. and just knock it out of your hand and move your hurl away and into the paw and away he go then. And I, you know, obviously he did, but I cannot remember him giving away too much ball. He was always there to give a hand pass to someone or just a little 15 yard pass. And uh, he came out in all Rory. He played minor for Kenny. I didn't even see him playing. And the following year, he was playing senior for Kenny. So again, yeah. Uh, I, I think he's been one of the greatest ever defenders that definitely yeah. in my time. And I think the reason why he's four is that some people identify him, some of the newer yeah, generation are probably listening, as in the full back line. And the only reason he went back there, like he would have dominated that half back line for years to come. And that was no Hickey. It was just no 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 Hickey packed it up, really. It was the only yeah. reason he went in, yeah. wasn't so it? J- JJ was kind of caught in between, but I think uh, yeah. you know, just both of those, Tommy and Jay, just their timing. And JJ. You know, I know our colleague in the Sunday game, Don Logue, loves to go on about the spare hand. JJ was just the <laughs> best of that. He was master. But again, but, 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 right but, I, I, I'm one thing. And one thing that would always strike me about him as well. I mean, one of, I suppose, Cork's greatest player, to a large extent, we'll say, around that era, uh, it would have been Ben O'Connor in the half-forward line. You know, Ben was a little wizard and always, you know, played really well for Cork in most matches. Like, you could always nearly be, hang your hat on Ben. He was going to come up trumps and he's going to deliver the goods. Unless it was against JJ. It was the only time you didn't see Ben O'Connor. You just did not see he just I don't, totally snuffed out, you know. Uh, but I don't think uh, I don't think that was reserved alone for Ben O'Connor. I, I can't remember <laughs> yeah, anybody yeah. getting the better of JJ. JJ yeah. would be my number one of number all halfbacks. Yeah. Like I think, as, as Henry said, had he been able to stay and spend the last five six years of his career 
or the second half of his career in uh, in at wing back there. There, he he. I think he's the best. I even he could get forward with the ball too. He was a great athlete as well. But mm. his dominance under the high ball was frightening. You know, and even how and Henry, I'll probably a little better to this. How tough he was. You know, people but he, often. But a good hurler play. too, Henry. Though, like a good hurler as well. Oh, though, wasn't he? He's a, and that's what I'm saying. An absolute brilliant hurler. He, he never, you know, before his time, he never lost the ball for us. While Tommy, to be fair, you know, was excellent at the delivery. But Tom, JJ used to come out and he might only give a 15 yard pass for a half forward playing on. You knew, first of all, he was going to catch it and you could come to him and he, he'd deliver the ball. So, um, but teak tough. Jesus, just teak tough. And, yes. uh, and, and, and very quiet. Just did it in his own way. He was just yeah. unique. And you, you, you think back to that block with uh, Shane Scanlon. I know you think back in the time. Yeah. You know, that was just unbelievable. That was JJ. Just yeah. he never. I used to mark him in training sometimes. You think he'd be gone from, and next thing he'd come back. And I remember one night in training, there was a great lesson. I think it was 2012, and Brian Cody came over to me. I was after marking JJ, and he absolutely cleaned me out. Just absolutely cleaned it. And Brian Cody came over to me and said, Henry, I never want to see that again. You know, it was just, <laughs> he just dominated me so much. It was just, a, it was a great learning for myself, you know. Yeah. I've, I, I've, I would have had him in my top three by a distance as well. And I have a great fondness for him because when I, I used to, when I worked at Sports Show, we used to do a podcast together. And he was, uh, he's just the nicest, most mild mannered, gentlemanly, pleasant fellow you could ever meet. And it's so hard to marry that with the guy on the pitch who was like most of that Kilkenny team, in fairness to you, is you were. You were single-minded and very driven and like would do anything to win. But of all of you I've met, I don't think I've met a more pleasant individual than JJ Delaney. And I really just, I, stood, I do find it difficult to kind of marry it, you know, Henry? Yeah, and that's the way he was. Like, we used to have mighty crack after the match, like, and the session would be on. But that'd be JJ again. JJ, you just couldn't get the end of him. He'd just be still there laughing and joking and smiling <laughs> away and, and having great fun, so. But uh, just, you know, just an unbelievable defender. And again, I know we're talking a lot, a lot about the Kenny at the moment, so I don't <laughs> see the bias there, Neil, or anything. But, you know, definitely yeah, he'd have to be my top three. Definitely I would say to you, Tommy Neil, as well. Neil, yeah. look, looking at the list, Neil, we've got the only current players on the list are the two matters in the, in the top ten. And outside the top ten, I can tell you, there's actually there's nobody, nobody current there either. Do you think the, the current crop of halfbacks are being... Delta hard hard uh, hand here, and do you think there's anybody still playing outside of the two matters who should be in the contention? I'll be honest, I was surprised not to see Parik Mannion in there. You know, for goalie, like Good shows. his mm. his his form over the last four or five, maybe even six years, has been incredible. Um, and you know, I thought he probably would have got hurler of the year a couple of years ago. Um, and it seems to be you need to get hurler of the year at some point to be having a. To be even having a run for this, <laughs> yeah. this team, so um, he was very unfortunate there. And had, had he have got that gone, you wouldn't you wouldn't know. But he was the one immediately. You know, as I read the list, I thought no Park Mannion. You know that because if I was picking a, a half back that I wouldn't particularly enjoy meet for seventy minutes at the minute, I think he'd be he'd be top of the list. So he would. Yeah, and um, you know you have Neil the the. The, the the pleasant but slightly patronising kind of label you're the kind of guy who says oh well if he was born in any county in Ireland he'd make the team you know people say that about <laughs> you it is a compliment it is a compliment but I suppose it's slightly a backhanded one in a way but I suppose I'd be interested to get your idea on kind of what separates because you hear you know players of Christie Ling, Ring level or Division 2 Ireland they have the exact same skills as the lads playing in all Ireland semi-finals and finals it's just the speed at which things are done would that be the same with, with defenders, would you say? Defenders at the highest level, is it their reading in the game? Is it their reaction? What is it that separates the really good from the good? Uh, I think it's the pace at which things are done. You know, like we say, say at the minute, Antrim are playing in, in the Joe McDonough Cup. You, you will have, and, and whenever you're playing, Harlan, split seconds are massive. Whenever you have the ball in your hand, you know, you, you think things are happening slower than whenever you watch the game back. But... Whenever you're playing against, you know, higher higher level of opposition, those split seconds aren't there. As soon as you receive the ball, it's you know somebody's crashing into you. Um, you might have a, an extra second, or make an extra split second in the in the Joe McDonough, and that's the, the same for defenders. So whenever you're operating at a at a, at a lower standard, uh, you probably have a little bit of extra time to get your head up and pick a pass. But these players, you know, the, the JJs, the Tommies, the Brian Wheelhans, they were able to do that under pressure at the very highest level and 
that's you know it's the only way you can pick this team. You know, there's there's some absolutely cracking players who are representing you know counties who who aren't represented in this list. The, the likes of Leash and Antrim and Carlo. Um, I know there's only one Dublin representative there on the list. Uh, you know, big 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 Liam, Liam Rush, but uh, it's. It's it's about being able to do it on the big day as well. I think you know you have to measure somebody by how they play on the big day. Like Henry was always producing, you know, when it mattered most for Kilkenny. I, I'll be honest, I didn't fancy them in 2012. Whenever they, they beat Galway after the replay, and you know, it was known as kind of Henry's finest hour. That's when it was important for him to do it. You know what I mean? That that's mm. very very important that your good players play well when they're when they're most needed. And the likes of Torek Maher would be. A serious man to play well in an All Ireland final too, and Brendan, like his performances this year, you know, and he, he you have to remember Brendan spent club, probably club and county, Neil. club and county, yeah, yeah, he was incredible, um, but and he spent three or four years playing midfield for Tip as well in the middle of the middle of the decade. He played uh, in the full back line at times this year as well. I think did he, Brendan Maher, was he a detail to pick up Aaron Galan on a couple of occasions for yeah, uh, the man uh, marking couple, role a couple of times. Was yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and there's nobody, nobody, nobody better. <laughs> you know, if, if you come out and you see, like, the, not just shows you the confidence that Liam Sheedy has in him. It's just okay. Who's the best player in another team? Brendan. Look after that. Yeah, yeah. But the one, one thing I will say, Mickey, as well, on that, and I know you talk about the speed and stuff like that. But we talk about JJ and Tommy so far. What needs to be taken into account is that. Tommy had Michael Cabada and Paul Murphy behind him for a lot of the incidents. JJ had Jackie Turr behind him. So when we talk about these players, it's that unit, that solid unit mm -hmm. of defending. And I suppose that's what the top teams have. They have a lot more defenders of, of a high level. So when I think of people or not, I don't know if you mentioned Tony Brown on the list, Liam Dunn on the list. They were probably playing centre-back, wing-back, Kane as well, playing in those positions for Graf where they were trying to play wing back as well or trying to go back and cover the corner and help out some of their colleagues. And they were probably trying to play all those positions. Well, I think of JJ and Tommy, five and seven, that was my area. That was my 20 by 20 or 20 by 30, whatever it is. And I'll dominate that area. And I let my inside man work for that, cover the inside as well. So I think that was something that added to people being high up the list and they'd be the first to recognise that mm. as well, I think. Yeah. The we were complaining on the well, com, we were noting on the football halfback podcast earlier in the week of uh, recency bias and the problem with that. The fact that there's only two current players in, in the team shows not quite so severe, but I would say any Kilkenny man would make a very strong argument for Jer Henderson making that top 10, would they, Henry? Yeah, well, I, I you know, I've seen the footage first, and I think it was on your on the the the, the I think the the website about. Being a Colossus, and that's what Jar Henderson was. For any of the, the older, gener younger generation that are watching, he was just an absolute Colossus. I think, again, he would have played in any area. I think back then, you know, you, you think about when Neil, I'm sure, went to national school, myself, number six and number 11, that's where you played. So I would imagine Neil played either six or 11 on his school team, at, you know, the club team all up along, that's your position. Yeah. Is that right, Neil? They were the two pivotal yeah. positions: was centre back Pivot. and centre forward. Yeah. Of course, and like, it, and uh, uh, that hasn't that hasn't changed. You know, no, the two no. strongest players will, will will be there, especially coming up through. But even I only, you know, I was looking back through some of the old clips just before we did this, and you know, geez, Pete Finnerty was unbelievable as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he he was he was doing things that weren't the norm at that stage. You know, a half back. Carrying, carrying ball. He actually he played an unbelievable one-two with Tony Keady in one of the clips coming on and got a score. And oh, that's right, you know, yeah. it wasn't really, it wasn't really of that era, you know. But and that has to be taken into consideration because the game has changed so much as well. It is so much faster now, and players are players are doing things that, that haven't been done before. And even even this year, some of the stuff that Brendan Maher even done, even the club championship, the, <laughs> it's it's un, uncharted territory just yet. So the game's always going to keep improving. So we have to. I suppose uh, we have to work that bias in as well. Yeah. W one player, sorry, Mikey, one player that we haven't really spoken about and it'd be interesting to get both the lads' views on this. And I wonder, did Henry, he, Henry, you might have quite probably come up against him towards the back end of his career and the early days of yours um, was, is Sid. I'm showing Henry. my age now, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. my yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd say it's, it was uh, Brian Wheelahan. <laughs> and uh, and I'm and 
I, I would I'd safely say he gave one of the greatest exhibitions. I was lucky enough to be at the game myself. It was the 1999 semi-final where basically himself and Brian Corcoran decided to get into a game of ping pong, mm-hmm. and he was he was the, he was the reigning hurler of the year at the time. And I think there was a massive controversy because he actually the year before he'd gotten awfully were defending champions. He had gotten hurler of the year, but he hadn't made the All Star team. So he like they'd named the fifteen all stars. He wasn't on the team, but then they came to hurler of the year and they gave it to Brian Whelan. So it was. I think he's the only. I, I, I could be wrong. I think he's the only player that that's ever happened to. But and and in fairness to the all star selectors at that time, I think they had a certain element of um, a certain element of justification for it because he was so adaptable. He could like they throw him in full forward, they throw him on wing forward, they might throw him centre forward, he might go midfield, you know, like that. He, he was just such a like he had everything. And um, I see the only player as well that kind of from the modern era that made mm. the team of the millennium. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, did you I ever come up against him, Henry? Yeah, no, I did. Sure, I, Brian played, and I, I marked him in 2002. I'd say it was one of his final years, actually. And uh, obviously, we played him against him in 2000. Uh, he bet us in an All Ireland final. Brian McAvoy had scored three points off him wing back in the 1998 All Ireland final. Uh, he was sick that day, so they moved him in full forward. He proceeded to score one one, and awfully bet in Kenny. So he cost us in All Ireland as well. I think 94 was the year you referenced where he was the hurler of the year. And didn't was it 94? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And there are so many emoji games and stuff going around. I know there is someone else that happened as well. I can't think of at this moment in time, but you know, there's clips actually online this week uh, following the. The 95 final, was it? Was it the 95 final where he got a hook on someone at the last minute? He just yeah. came back and did But it, he was just, he was, like when we talked about Ger Henderson being the presence and the classes and so strong and put the ball down high on top of me, you know, I think Whelan was the modern, you know, poor Ignanian of his stage. He's just, he's reading, but as well as that, he's touching yeah. skill. Like yeah, that, that, yeah. that, oh, yeah, you're right. It was the, it was the brain power and this, the positioning. Yeah. And, and like, he was the one justice. player with you. Yeah, I have actually a few no, clips no, no, of Brian Whelan like, here you, that you I found. The... Um, I just thought I might show you oh, this because he, he was he was he was he was he's brought into the uh, the uh, the Leinster GAA Hall of Fame. So uh, they put up a little video. I just want to show a few seconds. They categorise like he saves a, a stylus. YouTube's disagreeing on me there, but uh, not to worry, not to worry. Yeah, he was, he was, he was. Like, I was glad. I, all I'd say on it, on him is, I, I, it was a big thrill of mine to be at that match, even even uh, and um, to to actually see him in the flesh, and um, to see him at kind of reasonably at the peak of his powers, and he, like he's alongside Henry. I'll, not not to be blowing smoke, Henry, but he's he's up like certainly the best players that I've ever seen actually play. Uh, he was he I think he made his debut actually in '89 uh, in the semi final whenever Antrim beat them to reach the All Ireland final and uh, kind of you know that that team was coming to the end of its uh, that that first set of awfully uh, players were coming to the end of their. Their 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 reign, if you like, they had won a few Leinsters, all right. But then he led the resurgence. You know, the '94 and the '98 All Irelands. You know, they they wouldn't have happened without Brian Whelan. And he wasn't and a he, big man, was he? Was he wouldn't have been a big physical presence or anything? No, well, I'd say I'd say he's five eleven anyway. Henry might mm. be better. You know, he yeah, wouldn't, he wouldn't yeah. have been massive, but he he wasn't he wasn't small either. He's kind of rangy. Uh, not as you mentioned, like Paul oh. Mannion, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be heavily mm. built, but he's uh, mm. he's a wiry kind of build. But as well as that, he was extremely fast. You know, one of the quickest halfbacks of that era, I think, because, you know, you know, Rookie Kenny played awfully. The thing was, DJ was our man, our go to man. And just like we were talking about, JJ overwent Brian Whelan on him. And he was the one player who could stick into DJ with, with his speed. So very, very fast. But such an extremely talented and stylish wing back, um, yeah. probably hadn't seen before. 
we're looking at the list here now, and a lot of them would have played in, in your era, Henry. Like it was probably seen as a, it was a, a golden age in hurling, I suppose, like the mid nineties to the mid, you know, to the end of the noughties. It's uh, kind of was seen by a lot of people as just a great time and a lot of competition. I'm just wondering, who were the guys when you were lining out and you saw that so and so was sauntering over to mark you? Who were the ones that you really said, "Bollocks, shite." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think because it was such a pivotal position and uh, the half back line, there was always strong players there. So uh, Sean Oak, I think, was ahead of his time. Sean Ogahalpine was ahead of his time in the physical condition that he was in. So he just, again, you just couldn't get away from very strong and powerful. Um, you know, as I said, I, I had the the honour of Mark and Brian Whelan as well. I think Shawnee McMahon, I don't think he was on the list there. But, but that, he's, that yeah, clear. he's oh, six. Six. Five. Five. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm missing five or six. Yeah, he's six. Yeah, Ken is five. Um, Shawnee McMahon, you know, was, you know, again, that presence, but that character and that leader. Um, and, you know, that half back line, I suppose, made the bake true for Clare. And, and, and that was one of the main reasons they won that final in 95 was that half back line. And he obviously is synonymous goal against Clare in the early rounds of that year's championship. And he was he was very cute. You know, he had a serious brain power on him. I remember marking him in a league one year where I used to go in late and try and, like Neil would do, come in and flick a hurl and catch the ball late on him. And we played him, we subsequently played him in the All-Ireland final that year. And I couldn't figure out where he was. Because yeah. what he did was that instead of standing up in his position, he went back five or six yards behind me. And I was always in front, so I just I was looking around, wondering where he's coming. And I think that's what he brought. He brought something that was unique. And obviously, his free taking before sixty fives were the norm to be scoring. Sean McMahon was the first one to do that. Yeah. So uh, someone like him, but like there, there, there are so many. You go up to Paddy Marr and uh, Ronan Corn. Obviously, again was a massive presence. I think Cork in that defensive unit they had that it was very very strong as well. So. Um, yeah, so there's so much, and it's different now. You know, you look at the half backs now. Declan Hannan is the is the different modern centre back now, where he's more a, a quarterback, a link player, an outlet player. When well, you go back to when we first spoke about Jared Henderson standing there and catching and hitting it straight Stop up the field, it. that is not the case now. That's what. Yeah, yeah. Well, now defending, and maybe you spoke about it in the full back line, defending is not the same. They used to have to defend, while now you have half backs in midfields coming back and give him protection. And when a half-back gets it, his job is not to belt it up the field. His job is to maybe give it a 15, 20-yard pass. And so the modern half-back has to be different too. It's not a Tommy standing on a puck out. It's, it's someone that has to get up on his man and be able to have legs to cover the ground as well. Well, even on that though, Henry, and it's an interesting point you make, because if you look back to last year's semi-final between Limerick and Kilkenny, like one of the big things that came out of the game was that <clears throat> the TJ was running riot, and it wasn't until they shifted Kyle Hayes back onto him that they put the, the some they put some bit of a they put some bit of restrictions on the influence that he was having on the game, and a lot of people in Limerick and people further afield would feel that Kyle Hayes's natural position is centre back. Um, like, what would your take on that be? Well, obviously he was a uh, man of the match the previous year in the Ireland final centre forward. So yeah. I think it'd be interesting yeah. to get Neil's input here because I know Neil has played both positions as well. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think th but the way Limerick played or half forwards give such protection. Declan Hannan gives such good quality ball into that full forward line. Um, I think that's the way the style of game they have developed under John Kiley and um, I think that's something they'll probably stick with but it is one that I, I know for the future that they talk a lot about that but it's just the modern game now is that people are not getting sucked up the field so if TJ's there and Kyle Hayes is there and he's going to go out the field that's the job that the dilemma everyone has now is that you don't want to leave that gaping gap down the middle so what you do, you bring back your half forwards, midfielders, and to give that protection and try and have someone there sweeping and reading and delivering that quality ball. But I'd be interested to see what Neil thinks, but like obviously he's played ball positions as well. Even how it's changed now is, as Henry says, there there was a time when whenever you were coming up against the TJ, the teams would just say, Okay, we're playing a sweeper, we're gonna always have two men in and around that area. But even that has evolved now, and we, we, we see it probably most prevalently with Wexford, even though they have a spare man back there, he, he's thinking very offensively a lot of the time. It was Sean Murphy, whenever the sweeper was defensive, um, and now they, they've, they've changed that a little bit uh, because they're thinking now about when 
when they win the ball on the half back line, let's break almost like a basketball team. You know, and they, they move up the field and they're trying to now, it looks like almost make the half forwards have to mark the half backs, mm. you know, give them something else to think about. There's an extra mm-hmm. man here. We're going to comfortably play the ball about and make you chase us and, and we'll go from there. Like Potty Foley is now the, he's the free man. I don't like to use the word sweeper because that's not how he plays. He's, he's ex- mm. exceptionally quick. He's about six foot five. He's a huge stride. So it's different for, for who you're playing against, but very rarely, and I'm sure Henry's seen this probably more prevalently in the second half of his career, very rarely would any team allow Henry to be one on one with their centre back or wing back. You know, teams are teams have been too smart, you know, for, for too long now to allow that to happen. But it's evolved again now where where Declan Hannon doesn't really mark this man. Dara Donovan or Kyle Hayes or somebody will step back and to, to help in that area to allow Declan to sit thirty five yards out. But whenever Declan does get it, you, you know, he's getting a, he's getting a couple of points in most games because he'll pop up in midfield, you know, he's a great striker of the ball. Um, so that's changed. Whoever's gonna be free or whoever's gonna be centre back they're, they're very much a part of the offensive uh, team. Neil, that takes great confidence, doesn't it, to be, like, to know that you, like, say you're Declan Hand and you're the captain of the team, you're one of the most influential players, to kind of, to accept that free role to, to people, people might think, oh, it's a luxury, but actually to kind of, to not have a defined job and to have a defined man for 70 minutes or 80 minutes of a championship match, to have to kind of go and influence the match in your own way, that, that's, that's actually a very pressurised thing to do, isn't it? It's funny, and you need a very particular type of player to fill that role, but even knowing Declan, it's no surprise that he revels in that role. You know, Declan was a, a wing forward for the first mm. four or five years of his career with Limerick, and uh, he would be very, very comfortable being the person who is, you know, trusted to hit that killer pass and be the man you know, with other, where the guys work it out. They very clearly want to give it to Declan, you know, for, for delivery. And you, you look just through the, back, the, the past two seasons, how, how many times he's able to put it in Arne Galland's pocket. You know, Limerick, Limerick plays so deep that Arne is usually in the full forward line by himself. And yet the ball, whenever they work at the Declan Hannum, they'll ensure that he has time to, and, and he always executes it perfectly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating, Henry, the, the kind of the evolution. Is like the, as you say, it's not, it's not a ball dropping down on, you know, Tommy and lashing it up the field anymore. They're, they're kind of a quarterback, aren't they? Particularly the centre-backs. Yeah, I think so. And I think the, the, the distribution is one thing, but as well, offensively, you know, what they're bringing to it. So you look at Wexford now, where Davey definitely has evolved the, the half back. So Potty Foley, you know, you look at him, you see the half forward, Wexford half forward pulling down the field looking for a short one. It leaves a gap up at the other end. And here, next thing you look up, and here's your wing back running up to yeah. take the puck out. Yeah. And that's yeah. how much it has evolved. And I like. You look at Declan Hannon has regularly started off as a forward, now playing centre back. Barry Nash, similar. I think he was a forward in his early days, now back playing wing back. That's the way Porrick Welch playing for Kilkenny, playing for his club centre forward, playing Kilkenny mm-hmm. centre back. I don't think that probably, it obviously did happen with some players, but it didn't happen as much. Well, now uh, it's a completely different game and, and way of playing those positions. Yeah. We'll, we'll finish up now in a second lads I just wanted just to clarify now the, the, your, the three you would be picking am I right in saying that all three of you would pick Tommy Walsh and uh, both of you would pick Tommy Walsh and JJ Delaney and is Brian Wheelahan your third or is there somebody else you'd put in there Henry No well I actually had Brian third I think Ken, Ken would be unlucky I think Paddy Maher would be very very unlucky as well and I think Paddy Maher if we have this conversation in two years more time I think he probably will be in the top three but for me uh, I have to say my own era I have to go with Brian uh, JJ and Tommy Okay and Neil uh, I think well JJ for me is Neil Don my number one and um, I think Ken in the middle I know himself and uh, Tommy are the two only players to have all-stars midfield forwards and backs but I think Ken was incredible and Henry made a brilliant point you know not not everybody was playing on on an, on, as part of an amazing back unit. I, I don't think the Waterford you know, back line was comparable to the Kilkenny back line uh, of the, you know, the noughties. Um, and I think Ken was just everywhere. You know, you could find him in corner back, he'd be winning ball, carrying it out, then he'd be scoring a point from midfield. I'd, I'd have to put Ken in, so would. And then I think Brian Whelan would be unbelievably unlucky to, to lose out to Tommy in the other wing. 
Well, I, Mike, Mikey, can I just, I just tell you one story, if I could, though, just before we finish, because I know Henry mentioned earlier there about Sean Og and how the difficulties that he found facing Sean Og because of his athleticism. And, you know, um, <laughs> I, I actually marked, I played against Sean Og um, in, in a minor league game. Now I'm switching codes ever, 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 ever so slightly just for one second. And we were playing football and he was playing for the Pierce Shea guys, playing for Nemo. And we were having to go up there to play him. And that was the first problem because anytime you went up the north side to play him, you knew you were going to, you were guaranteed to get the shit kicked out of you anyway. <laughs> so that was an absolute given. So, so I trotted in. I'm trying to make my way on a very good team. We had a good side now, Martin Cronin and a few others like the lads that would have gone on to play for Cartrow, Kevin and these. We had a good side that, you know, and we, I'm trying to make my way. So I trotted into corner forward. So, I mean, yeah, I was playing corner forward. The next thing, who do I see running in towards me? He's the same age as me, like, you know, but we would have never have come up against each other all that often because his team were playing at a higher level. Next thing, who do I see trotting into Martin? Sean Og. Now, his name had gone around Cork at this stage, like, you know, in terms of like, very difficult to get out in front of, just come so athletic, you know. So I said to myself, look, the first thing I'm going to do anyway is I'm going to go early because if I don't get out in front of him, I'm goosed. So the first ball that came in, I did manage to get out early, got the ball into my chest, turned and just lettered it. And for some reason, it curled and it curled beautifully over the bar. And I was kind of going, this is easy. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm away on a hack here, right? Well, like that. <laughs> the next, about the next five or six balls, all I could see from him was dust. <laughs> he just <laughs> let me go. And I think I was curly fingered before half time. That was the end of my, <laughs> that was the end of my days, Mark and Sean Oak taking off before half time, tail between the legs. But anyway. Sure. Is that your way of telling us that you've somehow managed to finagle him into your top three half back? No, oh, absolutely not. I do I wouldn't disagree with uh, I wouldn't disagree with uh, with Henry there. I think it's Tommy JJ and Brian Reed for me. I, well. I I actually have to say that that was how I voted in the poll as well. So yeah, there's, yeah. we have some level of unanimity here lads um thanks very much uh really enjoyed that chat and um just to say the hurling midfield vote is already up and live on the site if you want to have a look and have a vote and we'll have a chat about that next week sometime and henry you're, you've got to do it for dan as well haven't yeah, you yeah no, I, I, I was just going to give it a plug there if it's all possible rory yeah so we, obviously all the ga community are well aware of it so um i have a special edition jersey which i got gifted me from o'neill's which just lists the tenor ireland's i was involved in so it's a signed jersey. Look, there's so many GoFundMe pages up there now, so it's up there. And then, you know, just want to compliment, I suppose, the GA community as a whole, and the way they've really got behind uh, Dan. So um, if anyone can go um, donate in any small way at all possible, um, please feel free. Yeah, oh, well, it's, it's, it's a great cause. And the, the, like you said, mm. the, the, the mobilisation of the GA community has been oh, something yeah. to see. We had, we had Gooch on earlier in the week and he has his boots have gone for, I think it's 11 grand, is it? 11 yeah. grand, yeah. Yeah, That's phenomenal, fantastic. phenomenal effort. Yeah. Uh, just to mention, Sunday Sport is back at the weekend, 2-4. Port um, Watford tonight. Port Watford, there's one for you now, Neil. You can watch Ken McGrath in his pump. Uh, I was at the game. I was at, but believe it or not, actually, Mike, I was at that match. And I'd say it's probably the only time I've ever left. I was a supporter. I was on the town end terrace, giving John Milan loads of views. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, that's actually a fact. Uh, but I'll tell you... But I tell you, in all honesty, it is the only time I ever left a match where Cork were beaten, where I kind of wasn't really that disappointed because I just felt so privileged to have witnessed it. But anyway, that's neither here right. nor there. So watch it tonight on RTE too. And um, we will say, just say that the RTE website, News Now app, lots of GA features and um, votes and news there still. So I'd just like to say thank you very much to Neil, to Henry Thanks, and guys. to Rory for joining us. Enjoy Cheers, that. Thanks, folks. And we'll catch you all again next week. Thank you very much. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Thank you. Thanks, lads. Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over.